Introducing YouTube Memberships, a fun way to support the channel while getting some exclusive perks. Click the join button to become a member now and get benefits like badges next to your name on videos, behind the scenes photos, advantages during the live trivia game, discounts on merchandise, private one-on-one -on -one video chats, the ability to request future video topics, and exclusive 8-10 to 10 minute videos on the history of the NFL. And now, on with our feature presentation. Let's assume that the year is 1969. Man has landed on the moon. The Beatles are still the kings of the music world. And we're about to head into the 1970s after what has been a rather tumultuous decade and a decade full of tons of change throughout the United States, especially in professional football. Picture yourself as a sports fan, and in particular, a football fan during this era. NFL Sunday Ticket does not exist, so you cannot watch any game that you wish. Let's say that you have no desire to go to a sports bar. How do you watch the NFL if you want to? Well, the answer is obvious. You have to watch whatever game your local affiliate gives you. You're at the mercy of your affiliate. CBS has all the rights to the NFL games in 1969. So whatever game your local CBS affiliate is showing, well, that's the game you're going to get. You get what you get, and you don't get upset. And if you're at the mercy of someone else making the decisions, it would be nice to, you know, have an idea and know what the decision is. That seems like a pretty big deal, right? Imagine if you're getting ready to go out to dinner, and you ask your wife what she wants to do for dinner tonight, since it's her turn to pick. And she says that she wants Chinese food. Then, you're driving back from work, and she calls and says, Change your plans. We're doing pizza. Then, you finally arrive home from work, and she says, Change your plans. We're doing Mexican. And then, as you're getting ready to leave and getting dressed, she says, Change your plans. We're doing pizza. That would be quite annoying, right? That would be awfully irritating to say the least, if you have to plan your day around someone and that person can't make up their mind, changing it over and over again until they've exhausted just about every possible option in the book. Well, this station is KGMB, as in the CBS affiliate for Hawaii. Oddly enough, I've talked about them before, as on Jaguar Gatorade a while ago, my college football channel, I talked about a bizarre broadcasting controversy involving them regarding their decision to air one game over another that didn't really seem to make a whole lot of sense. You can learn more about that by clicking the card in the upper right corner. And we're going to talk about them yet again, because why the heck not? Because they were involved in a bizarre broadcasting controversy during the 1969 season that threw all the NFL fans on the island for a loop because they truly had no idea what game they were getting. One day, it was one game, and the next day, it was another, because KGMB changed their mind more often than The Girl in Eeny Meeny by Justin Bieber and Sean Kingston. And if I just got that song stuck in your head for more than a decade, sorry, not sorry. Because this is the story, but it might just be, the strangest broadcasting controversy of the entire 1969 NFL season. Before I talk about the actual decision that the affiliate made, or should I say, multiple decisions, we need some context to understand what the original game plan was, and what KGMB was supposed to show. Back in 1969, the CBS affiliate in Hawaii, KGMB, could show one NFL game a week, as they had the rights to all the NFL games. This was a big deal, because theoretically, elsewhere in the United States, if you were a fan of a team that wasn't being shown in the local market, you could make the trek to watch that game in person, you could adjust one of your signals, or you could find a place that was showing it. In Hawaii? Not so much. Hawaii is five hours away from the mainland by plane, so you're not exactly flying to NFL games or driving to NFL games out there. And good luck finding a bar that is open, considering how early the games start on a Sunday morning with some games starting as early as 8.30 in the morning. In the middle of August, however, KGMB 
announced their schedule of 13 NFL games to air. Why they didn't air a game on September 21st or September 28th? I'm not entirely sure. Heck, they didn't even air both Thanksgiving games. Opting to just air the one of the later slate between the San Francisco 49ers and the Dallas Cowboys. In a game that you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But that's besides the point. For the purposes of our story, the game that concerns us is the game airing on December 14th, as in week 13, which is the penultimate week of the season. And the original plan for KGNB was to air this game that you've been watching, as in the battle between the Cleveland Browns and the St. Louis Cardinals. On paper, it made complete sense as to why this was the scheduled game going into the season because this was slated to be a battle for the Century Division title. In 1968, the Browns went 10-4, and, and the Cardinals went 9-4-1, with the Browns winning the division by just half a game. And this was at a time when only the division winner made it to the playoffs, so it was first place or nothing. No one thought the new expansion New Orleans Saints were going to do much of anything and the Pittsburgh Steelers were tied in 1968 for the fewest wins in the league. So everyone thought going into the season that it was the Browns and the Cardinals competing in a two-horse race for that division crown, with the division potentially coming down to that Week 13 clash. All right, no issues so far. This was looking like the game to decide the division title, and this was the first and only time all season that Cleveland and St. Louis would be shown on TV in Hawaii so there wasn't any concern for overexposure. Pretty good game plan, right? Well, not quite. Because you see, the geniuses at KGNB forgot that, because this is 1969, and they're on an island in the middle of nowhere, that getting a signal for the game could be really, really difficult. That's kind of important. They forgot all about these things called pickup points. These aren't really a thing today because of satellites and whatnot, but back then, to get a good signal, you needed to find a good pickup point, or a place where you could get reception. This was a big issue in Hawaii, considering how far away they were from the mainland. In fact, in the 1950s, as TV was starting to grow, some stations, like KHBC, had trouble going on the air because they could not find a good pickup point, could not find a good relay, and could not get good reception. In other words, KGNB couldn't just pick up a random game willy-nilly. They had to take their technological limitations into account. And considering the fact that the pickup point, which was a California outlet, was not going to be showing the Browns Cardinals game, KGNB had to call an audible. Now, they were showing this scheme right here, as in, the battle between the San Francisco 49ers and the Minnesota Vikings. Well, that was a massive oversight on KGMB's part, but as Sec Heftel, the president and general manager of the station, said on this, the key point to remember is that we are, in effect, a California outlet as far as CBS is concerned. This means the Rams and the 49ers are our primary teams we have to go along with our pickup point. This is why the Rams and 49ers were shown so often back then in Hawaii. It was because they were the closest team, and thus, posed the fewest technological limitations. However, I absolutely love this comment made by Heftel when he said, we'd like nothing better than to spread the telecast among all NFL teams. But let me point out that Baltimore will be on four times, Minnesota twice, and Washington, Chicago, Atlanta, Detroit, Dallas, New York, and Green Bay once each. That is such a tone-deaf and laughably bad comment. Because do you notice what teams he did not say were going to be on the air in 1969? That's right. Cleveland and St. Louis. As in, the two teams taken off because of this screw-up. That doesn't really help Browns and Cardinals fans on the island, does it? That's like if the campus cafeteria closes down a pizza place and says, we'd like nothing more than to have a diverse number of food options. But let me point out that we have a Chinese place, a Mexican place, multiple fast food chains, and a burger joint. 
Like, yeah, you have all these other options, but we don't care. You took away the one pizza spot on campus. You took away the one food place that I love. I'm a picky eater, and I don't care about those other places. I just want pizza, and you took that away from me. Same thing here. I care about the Browns, or I care about the Cardinals. And you took away my only chance to see them because you jumped the gun prematurely. Regardless, even though KGNB jumped the gun and forgot how technology worked, and somehow forgot that they were on an island 2,500 miles away from the mainland, the new game was that Vikings 49ers game that you've been watching. Alright, we changed the game once. It stinks, especially considering the circumstances, but it happens. Nothing too unusual about that. What if we change the game again? Because now, instead of airing Vikings 49ers, we're going to air this game right here, between the Los Angeles Rams and the Detroit Lions. Two switches now. This is getting a bit insane, but on the surface, at least this one makes sense. At the time this switch was made, the Rams were 8-0 and were cruising atop the Coastal Division. People wanted to see the Rams, and people wanted to see MVP frontrunner Roman Gabriel, who you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. The Rams had a chance for an undefeated season. And people also wanted to see the Lions, who were 5-3 and we're two games back of the Minnesota Vikings for first place in the Central with six to play. It's a long shot, but it's doable to say the least. Compare that to the Vikings 49ers game originally scheduled, where the 49ers were 1-6-1, and, and were one of the worst teams in football with an anemic offense that had scored just 16.5 points per game, and were just about mathematically eliminated from the playoffs already, and the move made sense. Two teams with a winning record, and a combined record of 13 and 3, or two teams with a combined record of 8, 7, and 1, with one of those teams being one of the worst in football, meaning that the game was more likely to be a blowout. We're going with Rams Lions. Again, super annoying since we've gone from Browns Cardinals to Vikings 49ers to Rams Lions, but considering the circumstances, it makes sense. Two switches is a bit chaotic and messy especially for the viewing audience that has to plan their day around this. But as bizarre as it is, it's not too noteworthy, although we're definitely getting there. And in a shocking result, as you've been watching, the Lions won the game in convincing fashion, taking it by a final score of 28 to nothing. I don't think anyone really expected this game to be so one-sided, especially in favor of the Lions. But that's exactly what happened on this cold December day at Tiger Stadium. The Rams only mustered up four first downs, compared to the Lions at 16, who had four times the first downs that the Rams had. The Rams turned the ball over three times and committed 12 penalties. In terms of total yardage, the Rams had just 96 yards compared to 332 for the Lions, with the Lions having about three and a half times the number of first downs. And MVP candidate Roman Gabriel did next to nothing, as he went 7 for 13 with 41 yards passing, no touchdowns, two interceptions, 27 net passing yards when you factor in his sack, and a pass rating of 20.5, which is worse than if he did nothing but spiked the ball into the ground on every single play. It was a very ugly game, maybe the worst of the season, for one of the best teams in football. But do you want to know what was even more shocking about this game? It was not shown in Hawaii. That's right. This game? Hawaii did not get to see it. Because once again, KGMB decided, for no real apparent reason, to not show the Rams-Lions game. And instead, to show this game right here, making the switch once again to Vikings 49ers. Why they made this switch, honestly, I have no idea whatsoever. The Vikings had clinched the Central Division by the time they made the switch, so they had nothing to play for. The 49ers were 3-7-2 and, and were one of the worst teams in football, so they had nothing to play for. If the Rams and the 49ers were the two de facto local teams, wouldn't it make sense, especially after announcing a switch already, 
to air the better team and to air the Rams? Especially since the combined record of the teams in that game was 18-5-1, and, and the combined record of the teams in the Vikings 49ers game was 14-8-2? But if you're doing the math at home, as the Vikings won this game 10-7 in a much better game than the Rams-Lions won, with two fourth quarter touchdowns, so I guess they made the right call. Even if they took 10,000 unnecessary steps to get there, that is not one, not two, but three audibles. Three freaking audibles. We went from Cardinals Browns to Vikings Niners to Rams Lions and back to Vikings Niners. Give it another week, and KGMB may have changed their mind yet again. Absolutely crazy stuff. Now look, I have no problem whatsoever with stations flexing out games and swapping games for other games. Again, something like that happens all the time. But that's a one-time thing. To have it happen three times for the same week, once because you forgot that you were on an island in the first place 2,500 miles away from the mainland, one time for actual competitive reasons, and the other time for reasons that I, I honestly don't even know, yeah, that's going to infuriate a lot of people. I don't even know what to say to that. If you were living in Hawaii back in the 1960s and were a diehard NFL fan that actually remembers this, let me know in the comments down below. Also, you might notice that the case is arranged in a very peculiar way that relates to the topic of this video. So if you think you know why the case is arranged like that and what the significance is, leave a comment down below. Hawaii's history with professional football and the NFL extends well beyond the Pro Bowl. It extends to some exhibition games. It extends to the team that tried to sign O.J. Simpson away from the Buffalo Bills of the American Football League. And it extends to random broadcasting controversies like this one, where KGMB called more audibles than Peyton Manning does at the line of scrimmage. So as a word to the wise, whether it's about switching games or switching anything in life, people will usually be pretty forgiving if you change your mind once. If you change it twice, it's extremely dicey, and you better have a darn good reason for it. But changing it three times? As the Commodores would say, in 1969, KGMB made NFL fans across the island once, twice, three times a crazy. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe, as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.